You know, as a journalist, one of the things that I suppose we, we think about quite a lot is the idea that we speak truth to power, or at least we hold people in powerful positions accountable for wrongdoing. And in all of that, you can easily get lost in a negative frame of mind because there's so much wrongdoing to expose. There's so much to hold people to account for. And it takes a conversation like today, it takes uh, a speech like you've just heard to remind you that there are people who have rolled up their sleeves who are getting on with the business of transforming this country. So that's absolutely great to hear. And I think, in a sense, our next speaker dovetails very nicely with what we've just seen from Dr. Taddy Bletcher because she is our youngest speaker today. Uh, she's been listed in Times 2016 Most Influential Teens. She's won the Google Science Fair and Community Impact Award for the Middle East and Africa. She's been placed, as I say, on the Times and the Guardian's top 30 most influential teens list. I mean, the accolades are going to continue. She reminds me of a quote by Oprah Winfrey who says, don't worry about being successful, but work towards being significant and the success will naturally follow. Ladies and gentlemen, Kiara Nergen. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. When I like to look at the world, I look, like to look at it in two parts, problems and solutions. Let me ask you, in your car when the petrol's running low, what do you do? When your phone is dead, what do you do? When you're sitting in the car and the sun is glaring in your eyes, what do you put on? And you're looking through a newspaper and you hear about the worldwide drought. Okay, I expected that. <laughs> well, for me, when I opened up the newspaper and heard about the worldwide drought, I started thinking of solutions. And although it may not be as simple as a few weeks of testing, I'm 17 years old. So I may not have as much experience as the previous speakers or the speakers coming up next. But I believe us young South Africans can still be change makers. And to be honest, I personally feel we sometimes lack a bit of motivation. We lack the ability to believe in eccentric ideas, to follow our passion to spur revolutionary changes. Well, now you're probably wondering, as a young South African, how did I get here? Because not everybody believes a teenager can come up with a solution to a worldwide epidemic. Well, I vividly remember staring at the paint marked on the school's grass at the age of six. It was a race. And my knee was on the starting line and the siren sounded. My chest was thumping, my eyes closed in concentration and my knees were burning. Well, I came out sixth. And it might seem satisfactory if the race was not between me and five other preschoolers. <laughs> and after a little bit of six-year-old introspection, to be honest, I never wore my sixth place badge with pride. I'm the youngest in a family of six, and being the youngest of four siblings meant that I could very often conduct what I like to call primary research on what to do to be better than your brother or sister. I remember watching my sister in grade nine build a project on the 1943 Stalingrad War. And now if I have to be completely honest, when my time came to do the exact same project, I added a bit more detail. I added a bit more soldiers to my project. And this undoubtedly led me to understand that what was done can be done better by young South Africans. As a 10-year-old, if I was interested in the thrust of an airplane or combustion of a car's engine, I opened a book, I visited a website, or asked my science teacher to douse my burning curiosity. And looking at it now, I realized that every influential, every speaker here today has to be curious. Every person in this room has to understand what they do know and what they don't. Every young South African has to constantly see what they know in the classroom and what they don't, even though they may not get grades for it. We all have to expand our minds. 
Well, at the age of 13, I was diagnosed with Bellasia, a parasite-induced disease, and later bacterial meningitis, and was hospitalized for a portion of my grade eight year. And being the diligent student that I am, howled when I would not be writing the mid-year examinations at school. I recall lying in my hospital bed, in front of a few coloring pencils and a page, ready to make my entry into my school's internal stained glass competition. I'm not an artist, but I try. And I realized that if you tilt your head to a 40, 45 degree angle or so, the excruciating pain of your cervical vertebra would stop for just long enough for me to color in a vine border. A little bit of perseverance, I like to call it. Well, after, fe after my recovery and personally feeling the impact that science has had on the world, medicine in particular, I started to research the makings of seemingly insignificant daily objects. And I realized soon after that understanding the mechanisms in a wristwatch was just not enough for my curious mind. I started looking at the issue of rhino poaching that was affecting South Africa at the moment. And I realized that if I just look a little while longer, but not for information and statistics on rhino poaching, but for a solution, such as a thermochromic dye that can be applied to the rhino horns and only when they're killed, dye the horns a color, allowing them to still camouflage themselves. Although I couldn't get the necessary materials to continue the testing, I realized that I was onto something, a solution that can change South Africa. Well, then one thing led to a next, and soon I was researching the highly publicized issue of the drought that South Africa and 66% of the world was experiencing at the time. One of the major effects that the drought was having on South Africa was on our crop supply, which meant that South Africa, like most other countries, had to import most of our crops. I looked at my sister change her baby daughter's nappy one day, and I was surprised at how much liquid a low-cost nappy could absorb. After more research, I realized that the powder in these nappies are what are called superabsorbent polymers. And when applied to the soil of a crop, could retain large amounts of water relative to their own weight, ultimately acting as reservoirs in the crop soil. But they aren't low cost, and they're not biodegradable because they're chemical based. So great, we had a solution, but it's not solving the problem. So I try to emulate the properties of commercial SAPs, but making it low cost and biodegradable. Well, I started to research polymer chains, chemical compositions, and I'm not going to get into the scientific detail. But I realized, after rigorous months of testing in the garage and the kitchen, that I could find the necessary materials in an orange peel, because it had polysaccharide and pectin, what was nest found in superabsorbent polymers. And it didn't work. For the first month, second month, third month, it still didn't work. But I tried at it. I knew that if I didn't come up to a solution, I'm sure other young South Africans weren't thinking about the same thing. So I tried researching further processes, and through emulsion polymerization, realized that if you add the skin of an avocado, it could create a superabsorbent polymer. So I tested it. I experimented, and I researched. And eventually, I realized that I'd come up with a product that retained more water made the soil more moist and supported the growth of a taller crop than commercial SAPs, and ultimately would increase drought disaster areas food security by 73%. So there was a problem, and I came up with a solution. So I entered the Google Science Fair in 2016 and was named the Community Impact Award winner for Middle East and Africa, and eventually won the overall Google Science Fair. And <laughs> And after winning the Google Science Fair, I realized one thing, that when people say you're from South Africa, they're often surprised when we do amazing things. As in, you're from South Africa? But I realized that after winning the Google Science Fair, we should all be proud of fellow South Africans and not be surprised when they're doing change, making changes. So one could say it all started with the dirty nappy. 
But I think there are many other moments that encourage me to believe that I, as a young female South African scientist, can make a difference. And I'm sure other young scientists don't have the exact moments that I do to recall, but I hope they're one day able to reference my story as an inspiration and can live by Einstein's words every day. The important thing is to never stop questioning. Now, I know none, nobody in this room are the young scientists that I'm hoping to inspire, but I ask you all to think about your daily life and realize what can you make better? Oh, there's a job. <laughs> there. Thank you. <laughs>